for praise. Come on, bless him in this room. No, stay with me just for a minute. Well, you know, I'm here this morning to say that not only do we serve a faithful God, but we have the most faithful partners of any ministry in the world. And I just want to thank you this morning from the bottom of the hearts of all of our team. What we're experiencing here this weekend would not be possible without the greatest. And I'm talking about, I mean, here is a ministry that our founder has now been gone for four years. And we're having the greatest outpouring of the glory and the presence and the anointing of God in the history of our ministry. We're standing in an incredible miracle today. This World Conference is a miracle. But I can't tell you how proud. I know David, I know Susan, Jerry and I, Don, our team. We're so proud of you. There's not a day that I'm here, that I'm not at that wall, thinking about you, praying for you. You are amazing. And you are partakers now of this double portion. You're partakers. You are truly the Philippian partners of this family. You are the Philippian partners of this ministry. Paul said, because you have partnered with me, you have a right to partake of the grace of God upon my life. And I declare that the increase of God, the double portion of God, that the rest of your life will be the best of your life, and that this is your turnaround season, and it is not over, it's just beginning. Paul told the Philippians, he told only the Philippians, he said, because of your partnership, I want to declare to you that he that began a good work in you is faithful to complete it. Come on, let's declare it one time all my life. All my life you have been faithful. All my life you have been so, so. Amen. Amen. No, I want you to share that. The Bible talks about a good father leaves an inheritance. We are all seeds. And, and the thought is this, Greg, that my favorite fruit is seedless grapes. I don't have to work too hard. The sweetness is just right. But seedless grapes are man-made. Because everything the Father makes has a seed in it. And as we gather in legacy, we are the seed of a God move. Every one of us, it doesn't matter what your age is, but if you're in this room today, you're the seed of a God move. And Dr. Sorello, he saw into the future and said this seed must not be scattered but there must be a place where seed can be incubated because every seed needs a womb Come 
And when the womb is active, it means that there's going to be a birth. Turn to your neighbor and say, there's a birthing in this place. Because every seed must die to come alive. So in this place, the death is in a safe place. Amen. But it comes alive in the same space. Amen. So put your hands together and turn to your neighbor and say, you are the seed. Greg, you are the seed. Amen. Hey. All right. I want us to say this. I may not have this exactly right. But somebody say, I am the living, breathing legacy of Dr. Morris Cirillo. Come on, let's give honor to whom honor is due. Let's give the Lord a mighty hand clap for his servants, Morris and Teresa Cirillo. We understand that they're in heaven. We're not chasing after them, but we are chasing after the Lord God of Morris Cirillo. Before you're seated, turn to at least one or two people and tell them this is your year of increase, and then you may be seated in his wonderful presence. My chike bore ba seke la ba. Well, I just hope, I hope you know that when David writes to you and tells you how much we love you, I hope you know how much we really do love you. I want you to know the feeling that I have this morning, and Kevin, if you could stay with me, I love you so much. Come on, how many of you are glad Kevin is in the house? I tell you what. We're not going to be doing any more conferences without uh, Kevin with us. He's such a son of Morris and Teresa, and we love him so much. The feeling that I have this morning, and God is my witness, I have that feeling every day I'm on this campus. I'm not putting something out there because we're together for this conference. I feel so proud of you guys. I know, I know the sacrifices that many of you are making and have made, and I declare that God is never mocked, that what a man soweth, he will reap. And God is the God of a hundredfold. He's the God of more than enough. And I would uh, put our partners up against anybody in the world. And uh, we hear from speaker after speaker that there's no place like the Morris Cirillo ministry to come. And that's because our partners are not just partners, but we're family. And uh, we have an incredible spiritual papa that has left us a legacy that will live on until Jesus comes. and. So we just want to say thank you. I want to declare to you today, we want to share with you for a few minutes. Don is going to come in a moment. You know, it's one thing to stand here, and a lot of people will say things like what I'm about to say, which is that we're reaching more people, we're seeing more people train than ever before. But it's another thing, and I think this is really part of the awe that I feel every day. I've told Jerry so many times, I, I feel like that poster with the footprints in the sand. And, and I just look back and I feel like Jesus is just literally carrying us every single day. You have no idea. You have no idea what a miracle we're sitting in, what a miracle we're in today, Facebook and YouTube. But can you imagine God speaking to a prophet of God who lost both of his parents at the age of two? He wasn't backed by some orga big organization. He didn't even have parents that were backing him. And for God to speak to this man, Morris Cirillo, and say, I want you to build me a legacy center. He said, I want you to build it debt free. He said, I'm going to help you to build it debt free. And then he said, when it is finished, I'm going to take you home. And we used to say, MC, we're with you for legacy. We're with you for legacy being debt free. But MC, you can't go anywhere. We need you here. And uh, how many of you know 
that what a prophet speaks shall come to pass. How many of you, this is the first time you've been to Legacy. Is this everything that Brother Trillo said it would be or is it even more? Julian was telling me, our European director, we have about 30 partners here from the United Kingdom and this was the first time many of them were able to be here. They have been partners some for 30, 40, 50 years. And they said, Julian, not a penny that I have ever given to this ministry do I regret. I can't believe what the Lord has done. Look what the Lord has done. And it would never happen without your prayers, without your faithfulness. And so we want to say thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We want to share with you just a few reports that will encourage you. And we want to get to the word today. This setup right here is for our dear brother, Phil Driscoll. How many of you are glad Phil Driscoll is in the house if you've never heard him? And uh, so Phil will be with us uh, tonight. Uh, Io Aritza Jafor, who he tells me I don't say his name right. So I'm going to, my goal on this uh, weekend is to get Io to, Don, do you know how to say his name? I'm very close. All right, well, Io told me I was like not even close. I don't know if you were here in the last meeting. I took that, I was like, wow, I love Io. I don't want to mispronounce his name. All right, so anyway, we'll get that. Or it's a Jafur. Is that more like it? Anyway, Io is in the house tonight. Amen. And then he'll be in the house tomorrow morning to anoint everybody. Uh, and then tomorrow night's just going to be an all out night of worship with Phil, with Terry McCalman, and uh, Noel, and Kevin. And haven't, uh, haven't the worship team been incredible? Come on, give Kevin and Noel another good. But I just want to share with you a little uh, video report of an outreach that you're making possible while we're sitting here this morning, every single minute, somebody is telling us, I just prayed the prayer of salvation with Dr. Morris. Well, I'm not talking hype. I mean, millions, 28 million people watched this prayer last year but just under 400,000 told us, here's my name, here's my email address. And what we began to do in the uh, last uh, half of this year under David's leadership is we began to take this prayer and translate it into Russian, into Hebrew. We've had hundreds of Jewish people tell us, I just prayed this prayer to receive Jesus Christ. Instead of me talking about it, I want you to see what you are making possible. Take a quick look at this. These are the days of Elijah declaring the word of the Lord. And these are the days of your servant Moses Righteous is being restored And though these are days of great trial A famine and darkness and so Still we are the voice in the desert Crying, prepare ye the way I've got to pray this prayer very quickly. You say, what is it, Mars? It's the prayer for the miracle of salvation. The greatest miracle in the world. I speak the word tonight over your sin. It will be broken just that fast. the days of the harvest. Yes, it is. If you should die in the next few moments, what would happen to your soul? God is saying to you, 
You're never going to be alone anymore. You're never going to despair. I am going to be with you. Say this after God's servant. Dear God. Dear God. I come to you tonight. I come to you this morning. With all my heavy load. With all my heavy load. Dear God. Dear God. Take away my heavy load. Take away my heavy load. Forgive my sin. Forgive my sin. Lord Jesus. Lord Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. For coming into this world. For coming into this world. For giving your life. For giving your life. For shedding your blood. For shedding your blood. That I might know. That I might know. The power. The power. Of sins forgiven. Of sins forgiven. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my life to you. My future. My future. Everything. Everything. I surrender it to you. I surrender it to you. And I receive you. And I receive you. Now. Now. Into my life. Into my life. To rule. To rule. To reign. To reign. To guide. To guide. To direct. To direct. My life. My life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Put your Hallelujah. hands up and give him praise. It Hallelujah. is done. It is done. Hallelujah. It is done. Emor zot achare mesharet Elohim. Elohim yakar. אני בא אליך הלילה עם כל המסע הכבד שלי. Para reinar, gobernar, guiar. Tu si sin, što bi pravić, carcvovać, te sti, napravljaj, no ju si sin, pramo si čas i navsegda. O Bože moj, O, Боже мой, поднимите руки вверх и воздайте Ему хвалу. Сделано, сделано, сделано. Come on, why don't we go ahead and rejoice. While we were watching that, six people told us that they prayed that prayer with Dr. Morris Cerullo. I think we ought to just join the angels in heaven that are rejoicing right now and give the Lord a mighty hand clap of praise. And we just want to say thank you, thank you, thank you. Those of you that are sowing in this conference, those $300 gifts, that's what it is costing every single day And that's an incredible number. That is really less than a dollar, significantly less than a dollar to see somebody tell us that they just received the greatest miracle in all the world. This theater is filling three times a day with the altar call that's happening as a result. When you're sleeping tonight, every minute that you're sleeping, the seed that you have sown is producing an incredible harvest, 10,000 
dollars a month, and we just say thank you, thank you, thank you. And just before Don comes, and you can give the Lord, and give yourselves, and give the partners a good hand clap. Uh, there is no greater investment. I mean, if you're looking for a return, the Bible says that God, uh, that they that delight themselves in the Lord, God will give them the desires of their heart. There's no greater delight in the heart of God than souls, souls, souls. Before Don comes, I've got to just share uh, somebody that is with us and uh, another great thing that's happening in the ministry. You know, when COVID came, uh, we began to take, Dr. Srillo directed us to take all of the School of Ministry courses. How many School of Ministry students online with us here? Come on, raise your hands. We want to just, God bless you. God, come on, give them a good hand clap. You are amazing, amazing, amazing. Lynn, you'll remember, we had a meeting up in the upper room. We're right below the upper room uh, here. And uh, it was the last meeting that Dr. Srilla had with us. Don, you were there as a team. And he said, I want you to take all of the courses. And they were on a website. There was a $50 registration fee per, cost, per, per course. He said, I want you to take the registration fee off. I want you to put them on Facebook, put them on YouTube, create opens, create closes, send the people the study notes, give them uh, quizzes. And then when they pass the quiz, issue certificates of completion. And when we began this, while Morris was still alive, uh, we had several thousand students. And I thought to myself, you know, we stand uh, before the people on Facebook every day and share the school with them. What will they do when they realize that this man who is preaching to them on this school of ministry is no longer in the earth, but he's in heaven? And uh, this is why we know this has never been the work of a man. We honor the work that Dr. Srillo put in, but it has been the work of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You can give the Lord. You can. That's because it's true in your life. God is not depending on anything that you possess. And uh, within 30 days, our school of ministry increased from two to 3,000 students to 20 to 30,000 students. Our Facebook page grew over a half million followers and as I stand before you today there are over 200,000 students in virtually every nation of the world that are participating in your Morris Cirillo School of Ministry. One of those students is here today and he sent me just the most precious email about a week ago with his picture. Uh, if you guys have the picture of Chinda, I want you to put it on the screen. I said, my God, this man is the absolute poster person. Listen, look at that. First of all, those are all of his certificates, but I love this uh, shirt. Heal the sick, cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Come on, somebody say amen. Do you know that 70% of our students are in their 20s and in their 30s? Chinda, all the way from Great Britain, I want you to come and just give us a quick greeting. Give us a quick, quick word. Come on, somebody give our precious brother Chinda a good God bless you as he comes. God bless you. Praise God. Can you shout Jesus? Shout Jesus! I'm honored to be here, and I want to say a massive thank you to our papa and mama and to all the staffs that have made this happen. And also for you that is here as well, the partners, you're doing an incredible and amazing thing, and you will not lose your reward in Jesus' name. My name is Chinda Chinda, and I came all the way from Britain. And it's, it's just so surreal for me to discover the School of Ministry during the pandemic time. And I was looking for ministry to go to, and this popped up. And then I started following Papa on, on, on YouTube. But I'm from a church, uh, some of you might know, Deeper Life Bible Church, uh, back in Africa from Pastor W.F. Kumi. He talked about how uh, Papa mentored him into miracles, signs, and wonders when he was speaking in one of our workers' meetings. I was shocked because I know this man. And for him to endorse Papa, and he say he takes his tape, beginning from 19, the early 80s, he will listen to Papa's tapes on signs and wonders, power of the Holy Spirit. He will listen to it over and over and over and over and over again, and then he will come, even the first crusade in Lagos, in the stadium, 
after listening to Papa's tape, he just came and spoke exactly as Papa did. Blind eyes. People were, lames were walking. Crutches. Things were happening. And when he said that, the video is on YouTube, I said, oh my goodness. Then I said, look, I don't just want tape. I want to dive in. I want to take everything that Papa has given. So I registered for this course. Why I was doing this in November, I had a crusade in Cape Town. Oh, to God be the glory. I started listening to what Papa is saying with the power of the Spirit, the unity in the Spirit, our tongue, and everything. I went with that same power to Cape Town Mission's plane in South Africa. And by the time they were three, three meters away from me, and the crowds were there, and I was here after ministering that the touch of Jesus. And as I finished praying, I said, Holy Spirit, I'm not going to touch anyone. I'm going to stay here, just like Papa have said. And I said, Holy Spirit, move from the beginning down to the, the pastors, the bishops. They were all falling down. There was a wind. We saw healing, blind eyes, and we saw sicknesses, shoulder blades changing. And I came back from South Africa, and I said, oh, God, I want more of this. I want this more of this power. And I went into the course on the 31st of December last year. The Lord opened my eyes, and he said, I'm sending you all over the world. And this year we're having crusade in Brazil, crusade in Slovakia, crusade in Romania. And I say, I am going all out. I want to let you know if you are here and you have not done the school of ministry, God is raising an army. Our papa say, end time harvest and the time is here. I want you to go and register because it's over there in heaven. But I'm telling you, I'm one of those army. I'm one of those army has raised. Tell the person by your side, it's time to be one of the army because Jesus is going to rescue men and women from the pits of hell. Hallelujah! Amen! Somebody say fruit. That is the fruit of your prayers. That is the fruit of your giving. Multiply it by about 200,000. Come on, give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Listen, if you're not registered for the School of Ministry Spring, are they at the re registration table or cards? Or we're just going to, they'll be out there. You need to, it's quick. It'll take you 30 seconds to get registered. What a great thing to do in the new year. And uh, there will be cards at the registration uh, table of all people in the world. Everybody that's in here needs to be in the School of Ministry. And it's your inheritance. All right, come on, speaking about your inheritance, how many of you are glad the one and only Don Mandel? Don, I want you to come and share what the Lord is doing internationally. Come on, this is the fruit of your prayers. This is the fruit of your giving. Come on, give Don a great God bless you as he comes in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. I'm just still kind of spiritually digesting what uh, our brother Chenda brought forth. Let's give God another <laughs> praise. And he doesn't take any glory for himself, but let's give God praise for the life of our brother Greg. In this, hallelujah, in this aspect that at that critical moment of Dr. Cirillo finishing his course here on this earth and the pandemic covering the earth to be attentive to God and see this opening. And uh, so let's give one more time. Thank you, Jesus. We saw yesterday that Brother Srollo's prayer, ask me. Can we say that together? Ask of me. Oh, my goodness. That's why these teams leave San Diego. The Chargers, the Houston Rockets were here. The Clippers said they'd rather. OK, ask of me. It's a little better. And I will give you the heathen for your inheritance and in the uttermost parts of the world for your possession. And we saw that with Abraham, yes, it's exciting. A hundred-year-old man have Isaac. But no, he was told that he was going to have as the stars of heaven. And so Dr. Cirillo's prayer is still being answered through our lives 
But I have a special regard. You know, it says in Philemon 1.17, if you count me a partner, I have special regard for the partners of Mara Cirillo now in 2024 that they get an extra blessing from John 20:29. 20, Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Those who, yes, three people, hallelujah. <laughs> Hebrews 11, 6, without faith it's impossible to please him. And so that greater layer of faith that even though our founder was not here several times a year to light that fire, that fire is still lit in your lives. Hallelujah. And I believe that so much more of your prayer is coming to be answered. The disciples had such a short revelation. They thought it was all about what he was doing while he was on the earth. So in our part that we play, there are still many towns and villages around the world that do not have broadband internet. How many of you know that? They have a smartphone, they buy a little card, and that card gets consumed almost immediately. But uh, I've been very privileged to go, and so we're going to share with you a little uh, video, and I want to give a disclaimer that our TV department, due to staffing, was not able to do all of the nuances. They just are going to play it for us. So if there are some cuts that are a little choppy, uh, please don't blame them. They're the highest standard of professionalism. But you'll just go with, I was going to say, I'm going to take you with me, but you were with me. Hallelujah. You were with me during the year. We had 148 events in uh, 46 cities in 13 countries, and we'll just take a little look if they're ready to roll the video. Hallelujah. In 2024, the Morris Rillo Live In Nation Schools of Ministry and Cirillo Centered Conferences went forth via 148 events conducted in 46 cities in 13 nations on four continents in the footsteps of Dr. Cirillo. Let's look at just a few examples of each of the main categories of ministry. Dr. Morris Rillo had a fruitful year, not only via the GVA School of Ministry online and evangelism, but also in training conferences in the nations in Urdu, Russian, Kikuyu, Kamba, Swahili, French, Tele and other languages. down here literally in the middle of nowhere in East Africa. And on the side of this building is a large Coca-Cola sign. After 34 years with Dr. Srillo in 110 nations, in 2024, Don continued the training of nationals in Russia, Israel, twice, including near the border during the war, UAE, and 11 other nations in South Asia, including Pakistan, the Far East, and Africa. But uniting the body of Christ, expect me to listen to your prayer but I'm not God and I think he had also maybe seen his father praying to get that extra 15 years and so he just decided I'm going for it and he started to just pray up a storm and he humbled himself greatly and God heard his prayer and God brought him back to his kingdom <laughs> hallelujah but Jesus gave us a great purpose. Et ce sont ici les signes qui accompagneront ceux qui auront cru. Shepherds of God. And we know your eye is upon this people. Okay, hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Dr. Srillo taught that souls are God's heartbeat, not only in large meetings like in Pakistan, but also training nationals to conduct smaller outreaches to crowds that are already gathered in villages and towns. We not only harvest, but also mobilize nationals for further harvest right where they are. Our brother has been set free. He's been set free. He just took a miracle. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm sorry for my sins. Greg Morrow has emphasized that Dr. Srillo has multiple mantles that remained on the earth. One that manifests mightily is that of healing and deliverance, a gift from his life that keeps on giving. on me in my name they will cast out I mean, Who did this for you? He is saying that it is a common code. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, God did this for you. Amen. Mama. I've been sick for five years. And today I've not been well. But now I feel I'm okay. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you for your now I can speak. Anointing with oil is simply a point of contact to pass on Dr. Srillo's equipping, training, and victory from his great ministry, marriage, and legacy. Exciting news for 2024, the GVA Online School of Ministry is expanding into Hebrew, Arabic, Russian, Swahili, Portuguese, German, Hindi, and other languages. Another purpose of international travel is to build, strengthen, and renew key relationships with church and government leaders. In 2024, the partners of MCWE provided generous humanitarian aid in the nations, including ambulance and fire engine support for the Turu tribe in Uganda, Pakistan facility assistance, Pakistan church burning relief, and much support in Israel, both ongoing and special supplemental due to the war. Also, abundant facilities assistance in Malaysia, making possible numerous humanitarian outreaches. David Sorello, Wayne Hillston here. I just want to say a great big thank you for the way you sow into the work of God here in Israel. And thank you for that.
Nationals from around the world send their thanks to the partners of Mars Rule World Evangelism for making possible these precious visits, contacts, and events, especially at a time when visiting the U.S. from the developing world remains challenging and many villages and towns are still entering into the realm of broadband internet. These live events meet a need and complement the other outreaches going forth from the Morris Rillo Legacy International Center. Hallelujah. Well, we're very blessed to have with us today from the Democratic Congo. Je me permets de vous inviter uh, l'apôtre Kohungu. We have a, a pastor, a Reverend Apostle Paul Kohungu from Kinshasa, along with our brother Jean René, and they represent. <laughs> Hallelujah. Could we put those uh, photos that we gave earlier uh, from the TV department, if you got them handy? Thank you so much. This is one of the great power friendships, relationships. Brother Srillo said power doesn't travel in words, but in relationships. But there was such an affinity and such a love between the Srillos, and that is Papa and Mama uh, Olangi, and they also are very faithfully carrying forward uh, the legacy. Do we have another microphone? Okay, we got one here. Testing, okay. Here. But I want to be clear that um, we also send our greetings to uh, Papa Alain, who is the president now, and of course, uh, Papa Paul and Mama Sophie Alonghi, and they're all such good partners. So one more time for Apostle uh, Paul Kahungu. Hallelujah. Alléluia. Excuse me, he speak French. Acclamons Jésus Christ, le roi des rois. Acclamons Jésus Christ, le roi des rois. Testing. Je vous salue au nom précis et merveilleux de notre Seigneur et Sauveur Jésus Christ. I salute you in the matchless and marvelous name of Jesus Christ. Vous savez, lorsque je vois le thème de cette année ici chez le ministère du Dr. Maurice Serillo, you know that when I see the theme of this year's conference uh, of Maurice Serillo, donc j'avais bête se réveiller. J'avais de se réveiller. No, I, I repeat that. I repeat that. Pour this prier is, enfin que la malédiction tombe. It has caused me to pray that the curse would fall. Et que le mythe soit rompu. And that you and that your souls would be filled. Au cours de cette conférence, tes limites seront rompues et les bénédictions descendront vers Hallelujah. toi. Hallelujah! During this conference, the curse will be broken and the blessing will fall upon your lives. Il y a une meilleure année. Une meilleure saison qui arrive dans ta vie au nom de Jésus Christ. There is yet a greater season that is coming to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Vous savez, lorsque j'ai vu ce thème, c'est le même thème que le ministère chrétien du combat spirituel a dégagé cette année. When I see this theme referring to the year of increase, it is the same theme which we have uh, adopted in combat spiritual, spiritual combat. That's the name of their ministry. Là-bas, notre thème c'est réveillons-nous. And the other, the uh, continuation of that theme is, let us awake, let us awake. Hallelujah. God is certainly going to do something. So, our theme is, oh, let us awaken or let us arise, and here we have your theme. I present you the best Wishes and Venant respectful salutations of our organization, Olangi Wosho, which is a spiritual combat. Mandaté, nous mandaté, they have given us this mandate pour présenter les meilleurs vœux de cette année 2024. to present their best regards for this year. Papa et Maman Olangi avaient tissé une alliance de vie. Papa and Mama Olangi had forged a divine alliance. Ils ont travaillé en synergie. 
They worked in synergy, vous voulez dire, avec les Cirulo. Ils ont travaillé en synergie avec le docteur Maurice Cirulo. They worked in synergy with Dr. Cirulo. Donc, Papa Cirulo, c'est un patrimoine. Papa et Maman Langi, c'est un patrimoine international. Hallelujah. So they were both like patriarchs and matriarchs operating together. Et ils sont pas là, ils sont partis, mais le vision continue, l'œuvre continue. Hallelujah. And they are no longer with us physically, but the vision continues. Voilà les les soutiens de la fondation Langi Ocho qui est chapeauté par Papa Alain Gabriel, le berger sentinelle. Il y a le général Paul, évêque général Paul David Olangi. Il y a Maman Sophie qui était avec nous l'année passée ici. Il y a Maman Da Silva. Il y a Maman eh, okay, Ketia. Well, ralentissons, ralentissons. Il y a des. Yes, all the support and blessing from the Olangi Foundation, including Paul, uh, Alain Olangi, the president, Paul Olangi, Sophia et uh, Silva. Uh, da Silva, da Silva, Kaseya, Kaseya, Mama Kaseya, et Mama Enis. Les époux et les épouses. Papa Dennis as well. Hallelujah. Ils vous ont salué. They send their salutation. Et ils sont toujours attachés avec le ministère de Papa Maurice Cirillo. And they are still very connected to the ministry of Maurice Cirillo. Papa et Maman Maurice Cirillo sont partis. Papa et Maman Cirillo are departed. Mais je vois David Cirillo, je vois Suzanne Cirillo, je vois le pasteur, je vois le staff qui continue l'œuvre. I see Susan Cirillo, the staff. Hallelujah, that you're still continuing going forward. Malgré aussi nous, Papa et Maman Olangi sont partis. Despite the fact that Papa and Mama Olangi are also departed. Mais l'œuvre est en train d'être pérennisée. We go forth as if uh, continuing with the sept administrateurs qui sont chapeautés par Papa Alain Gabriel Olangi. This is another. Uh, vous vous référez à notre frère là. Eh. Yeah. Ici nous avons notre dont le ministère c'est grand, c'est dans le monde entier. It's a worldwide ministry. It's very great. Nous avons le missionnaire responsable du siège de Chicago à Aurora. We have our missionary who's responsible for their headquarters in Aurora. Donc, le message qu'on m'a donné, c'est quel message? The message that I bring to you, and then on va terminer. De vous fortifier. To strengthen you. Tenez bon. Hold fast. Comme Jaibet. Comme Jaibet. Se réveiller. Okay, it's going to improve. En brisant la malédiction, breaking the power of the curse. En brisant les limites, hallelujah. C'est pour que l'œuvre aille. That is that everything gets raised up to a higher level. C'était de aller de l'avant. That lifts you to a higher level. Papa et maman Maurice Serile ne sont pas là. Even though Papa and Mama Maurice Serile. Mais l'onction est descendue sur vous. They, their anointing and their power is vous allez continuer l'œuvre. And you are going to continue to rise up. Et les Olangi aussi sont avec vous. Vous continuez l'œuvre de Papa et Maman you. Maurice Cirillo. And they're they're in honoring of uh, Maurice Cirillo. Hallelujah. Okay. Hallelujah. Merci d'être venu. Je crois que on a. Come on. <laughs> très rapidement, très rapidement parce que là. Alléluia. Yeah, we thank God for this opportunity. We thank everybody. We thank all leaders for this ministry. Uh, in the name of uh, Olangi Watcher Foundation, we thank you all. God bless you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Can I get everybody to rest on their feet? Everybody, can we stand in the presence of of Almighty God. One thing that I've learned in this ministry that Papa would always say, he would say, this is not the work of a man, but it's the work of the Holy Spirit. Am I right? How many of you know that in these days ahead, God is calling us to a higher place of praise? Oh, come on, somebody. God is calling us to go beyond the point of blessing into the realm of power. Amen? Hallelujah. Zion is calling me to a higher place of praise to stand upon Magnify his name to tell all the people of every nation 
of you know 2024 is your year to increase your praise how many of you know your advantage is in your praise how many of you know he inhabits the praises of his people come on let everything that has breath in this place right now go ahead and praise the lord the bible says clap your hands all ye people shout unto god with a voice of triumph this is the day this is the day not tomorrow not yesterday this is the day that the Lord has made and we will rejoice and be glad in it because he is the author and the finisher. What he began, he is completing. We give you praise in the mighty name of Jesus. Somebody shout increase. Somebody give Kevin, Noel and the band, give them a good God bless you and our brethren from the Olangis, God bless you. And Don Mandel, all I can say is there is nobody like Don Mandel. Come on, give Don a good God bless you. You know, I was sitting there and I said, boy, I just thank God. You know, I just get to give. And Don is the one that has to be out there in the rain and in the mud. And, uh, you know, that's his heart and that's what he got. Uh, you know, from Brother Cirillo because there was really nothing. There was no place Brother Cirillo wouldn't go. And you see this place, but you don't hear about the times when he would be in tents having to uh, bat the bats away. And, uh, you know, there wasn't always jets and there wasn't always hotels uh, in the places that he would go. And so, Don, we just honor you so much. And how many of you are going to increase your prayers for Don in 2024? What's happening right now, and Don will talk to us a little bit about it uh, tomorrow, what's happening in Israel is incredible. What's happening in the nations of the world is incredible. And uh, Chinda, Chinda, what an incredible testimony. Somebody give Chinda a great God bless you. If you don't have the baptism in the Holy Spirit, just say Chinda's name a few times and you're going to get it. Amen. Bishop. 
it's just such an honor. You're just really part of the family. We love you so much. And how many of you are glad Bishop McClendon is in the house? Uh, he is really, really is, uh, you know, I, it's hard to say. I don't want to say he's my favorite preacher because I know the people would be offended. But he's my favorite preacher in, a, in my realm of favorite preachers. And uh, he really, truly is. And you know what I love about him? is you know we don't go down a list and just say you know who should we who's the who's the flavor of the month you know let's invite them I and mean, that's never been the way this ministry has been you know brother Srilo taught us that power doesn't travel through words but it travels through relationship and what we understand about the anointing is that uh elisha wanted something how many of you came to this conference wanting something from god i know you did that's why you're here and uh, Elisha wanted a double portion. And then Elijah said to him, you've asked for a difficult thing. But he said, if you see me when I'm taken, then you'll be granted that request. And then Elijah began to try to shake him off in Gilgal and in Jordan and in Bethel. And, uh, but Elisha said, oh, no, 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 no. I'm not going to break this connection. And I want you to know that this man that is coming is somebody that has been connected to the life and the ministry of Dr. Morris, Cirillo, Teresa, the partners. It is always, I can't really imagine a conference, especially with you just being right up the road from here and you're so busy and you're so gracious with your uh, schedule. You know, I thought about Ephesians and it's, uh, you know, they tell us that there's apostles, the prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. But, you know, this is somebody that I think just kind of carries all of those uh, things. And uh, we're just incredibly blessed. The double portion of uh, our dear Dr. Morris Trillo truly rests upon his life and ministry. I want you to join me in giving a great 54th annual Morris Cirillo World Conference welcome to the one and only Bishop Clarence McClendon. Come on, give him a good God bless you as he comes in Jesus' mighty name. I mean, give him a good increase, your honor. How many of you know 2024 is a year to increase your honor? We love you so much, sir. You're the best. Thank you, thank you. No, no. Honored to be here. Hallelujah. Oh, now, you can do better than that. I said hallelujah. I know I'm in the midst of people who love Jesus with all their hearts and all their souls but I want you just to look at your brother your sister to your right or your left and remind them tell them you're very blessed no that was weak that was that was weak look at him and tell him you're very blessed to be anywhere near me this morning tell him that now lay your hand on them. Lay your hand on them. Don't, 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 don't hold their hand. Lay your hand on them and say, I am God's anointed. And anything good can happen near me. Look at them. Tell them, I am one of them that Jesus was talking about when he said, and these signs shall follow them say I'm one of them Jesus said they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover now I want you to give them your best Holy Ghost head shake go say I don't know I don't know I don't know put your hand back on them put your hand back on them put your hand back on them Put your hand back on them. Say, wherever sickness or disease or malady or malfunction has attempted to raise its head in your life, the moment I laid these hands on you, a recovery began somewhere in your life now say receive it in the name of Jesus keep your hand on them if you pray in the Holy Ghost pray in the Holy Ghost a 
about 60 seconds. Come on. Reba kesha terebat. Man terebarian terebosa. Makerea shoteremande. Reketandela barrekasha. Don't stop. 30 more seconds. Eba reketata. Yara. Yara teraba yisha terema. Irekayara ba eshete. Man terebarian terebosa. 15 more seconds in the Holy Ghost. Irebare asho terema. Erandera biyare eshe. Vokandera bare eshe. That's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yarabo eshandera ba eshata. Aha. Aha. Lift your hands where you are. Oh, my Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your anointing. I thank you for your presence. It is your presence that makes the difference. Moses declared that your presence is what distinguishes your people from all the other people on the face of the earth. It is that your presence goes with us. Spirit of the Lord divine, you are welcome here. Have your way in the midst of this people, for they are the inheritance of Jesus in the earth. Thank you for the integrity of your word. Thank you for the intelligent Holy Spirit who is with us and in us. And now we thank you for a door of utterance open to us in the Holy Ghost that we might make known the mystery of the gospel and speak boldly as we ought to speak. And we declare this a day of increase. A day of liberty, a day of victory, a day of breakthrough, a day of illumination, a day of revelation. And we vow to give you praise. We declare a day of salvation. And we vow to give you glory for everything that is said and done in your name. And if you agree with the man of God, say it is so in the name of Jesus. Now give Jesus the greatest ovation that you can. He deserves it. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. Glory be to God forever. Woo. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord if you can. And if you can't just stand there and holler, it won't bother me. I promise you that. I'll be all right with it. We greet you in the strong name of Jesus, and we remind you that he is Lord, and there is none other beside him. And we give God the praise for this opportunity again to stand and to touch once again the anointing and honor the legacy of God's prophet, God's apostle, the man of God, Dr. Morris Sorello, we honor his legacy and Mama Teresa so much. I know you do too, but let's just thank God. I mean, I was looking at the videos, listening to Don, and I thought, what a, I mean, what a, what, what a, what a vision God gave that man, round like the world, and what a heart God gave him that even now that he's in heaven, the fire in his heart is still burning. In everyone he touched. I'm here, you're there because God touched that man of God. Let's thank God for him one more time. It's right to do it. I said, It's right to do it. Uh, yeah, and we are honored to be a part of this great conference and to uh, David uh, Sorello, we love and honor you, appreciate you, and to uh, my dear brother Greg, we love you so much. What a, what a gentleman and a prince of God he is. 
Show him some love. Come on. I just think it's right to do it, you know? I think it's right into all the Cirilla family, to all the ministry here to spring, my dear friend who helps us. You know, she drives up sometimes just to show up and just just, just to hear the word and come back. I said, good Lord. I, 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 she drives all the way up here just to hear the word sometimes and goes back. And what a blessing she is every time we come. So let's thank God for her too and for all those that that minister you know look anybody who's doing anything for god there are people behind them that never get any salutation you know what i'm saying and it's it's right to do it now i want to get to the word of god i will not be uh, eternal but i will be immortal for there is a word from god and i believe it will live forever so i want you to turn with me very quickly in your bibles i want you to go to the book of first samuel the book of 1 Samuel is where I want you to go. And I want you to go to 1 Samuel chapter number 13. Good to see uh, Brother Noel Robinson. What a blessing he is. I always appreciate his ministry. <clears throat> uh, 1 Samuel is where I want to turn. And chapter 13, verse number 16 is where I'm going to begin reading the Word of God. And as I was asked to be a part of this and so grateful to be a part, and when I heard the theme of uh, this particular world conference, and uh, I inquired of the Spirit of the Lord what my part would be, uh, and you know, it, all the, when we hear the word increase, of course, we immediately think finance, provision, in the natural sense, but there are so many more dimensions to increase than just finance and, and provision. And quite frankly, let me say without, uh, I believe, fear of contradiction, that if we do not get this fundamental and foundational element of increase that I'm going to speak to some degree about in the next 45 minutes or so down, there are other areas of increase that the Spirit of Grace wants to release upon us that we will not be able to handle or procure if we don't get this fundamental principle of increase down. And I want to read something to you, and I want to preface the reading of the Word with a couple of statements. Number one, it was 2019 before COVID hit that the word of the Lord came to me and the spirit of grace spoke the words to me that I'm about to share with you as somewhat of a theme for our time together. It was 2019 before COVID hit. As a matter of fact, I had received it. And when I say the word of the Lord came to me in the prophetic realm there are times when the spirit of God will just send you a word it's not like you're inquiring about it it's not like you're reading it something will come to you and because uh, you know the word of God the spirit of God then will direct you to certain things and certain places wave at me if you understand what I just said and so uh, the word of the Lord came to me uh, and the Lord said to me he said son I'm getting ready to re-weaponize my army. He said, I'm getting ready to re-weaponize my army. Everybody say, re-weaponize. He said, I'm getting ready to re-weaponize my army, and I want you to assist me in the re-weaponization. I said, okay. Uh, I said, Lord, that's fine. And I got the word of the Lord, and the Lord directed me to the passage I'm about to read to you. And I preached a couple of messages in my church, in the church that I oversee in Los Angeles, the place of grace, on the subject of uh, the re-weaponizing of God's army. I preached about two messages, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, stop. I said, okay, uh, and I knew I was supposed to say it, but I knew also there was further download that needed to happen in order for me to clarify. I'm saying this for a reason. Nudge your neighbor, say, pay attention. The boy is going somewhere. This is not just a story. And so it was early in the year, uh, 2019, and then uh, that year uh, in August, it was August because I wrote it down, August 5th, 
2019, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, it was a Monday, August 5th, 2019, the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he, he said, I, I want you to declare a breakthrough is coming to the body of Christ. I got up and I declared it that a breakthrough was coming to the body of Christ. Six days later, six days later on August the 11th, 2019, I was in London, England at the World Evangelism Conference with uh, Pastor Chris Ayakilome, Pastor Benny Hinn, and Dr. Morris Cirillo. It was the last time I saw Dr. Cirillo live in the pulpit under the anointing ministering. And in his time of ministry, six days after I had heard this word on breakthrough, the man of God, the prophet of God, Dr. Cirillo, stood up and he declared, now is the time for breakthrough for the body of Christ globally. And then, after he said that, and I remember sitting there uh, under uh, the anointing, and it was like the entire room was electric, and this prophet of God got up, and he said, now is the time for breakthrough in the body of Christ globally. And I looked at my men who were with me, and I said, that's a confirmation to what the Spirit of God just said to us a few days ago. But then the prophet of God went further. And he clarified and qualified what that breakthrough meant. And he defined it. And he said, what I am talking about is a sudden burst of advanced knowledge that will take you past the lines of previous resistance. I'm going to say it again. The prophet of God said the breakthrough that was coming, he said, I, I'm, this is a time of breakthrough, and let me tell you what I'm talking about. He qualified it and said, what is about to happen is there is going to be a sudden burst of advanced knowledge taking the body of Christ past the lines of previous resistance. Somebody say, past the lines of previous resistance. So what he was declaring was that the breakthrough and the breakthroughs that were to come were going to require a download of further revelation, knowledge, and insight to propel the church past the fortifications that the enemy had set up to our previous advance. Now I need you to hear me. Because this is the hour. The reason that was important, and uh, Greg, I think you were there. And, and, and the reason that was important, Don, were you there too? Uh, were you there in, in London in, at that world? <laughs> Julian was. And I remember uh, the, the, Dr. Cirillo came off the platform. I was sitting right there. He came off the platform after the time of ministry. And I remember him walking toward me as he was going out. And he said, Clarence. And he looked at me and reached out and everything went black. I went. <laughs> I was laid out on the ground. He was just reaching out to hug me. He said, Clarence. And he reached out. And the last thing I saw was his eyes coming up. And about 15 minutes later, about 15 minutes later, my men picked me up and took me to the back. And he was there and he looked at me and he said, now go and do it and say it again. I went back to my pulpit and the spirit, I, I got back. On the way back, the Spirit of the Lord said, he said, now you are released to begin saying some things that I've been saying to you for years, but you have not been able to release. He said, now say everything I am telling you to say. So I need you to grab your neighbor's hand and squeeze it really tight and tell him, you're about to get a download that's going to produce an upgrade in your revelation and in your application of your weaponry. The word of the Lord came to me a few months ago now and said, he said, son, I am not only re-weaponizing my army now, but my weapon systems are receiving an upgrade. 
I'm going to say this again. Grab your neighbor's hand and tell them an upgrade in weapon systems. You see, the, the United States Army, the United States Navy, they've had missiles and bombs for a hundred years. But every once in a while, the weapons get upgraded. Are you still here? The equipment gets upgraded. And the problem with the body of Christ right now is we are still using 1960 revelation for 2024 devil. Now watch what I'm saying here. Go, 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 go to 1 Samuel chapter number 2. Go to 1 Samuel um, chapter number 13. Let me read a little so you'll know I'm preaching. 1 Samuel 13, verse number 16. This is where this began, and I will not tarry here long, but the Spirit of the Lord said to me, I had to take you methodically, and I won't be long. 1 Samuel 13, 16. It says, Saul, Jonathan, his son, and the people present with him remained in Gibeah of Benjamin, but the Philistines encamped in Mishmash. The Philistines, you know, are the enemies of God's people. Then raiders came out of the camp of the Philistines in three companies. Everybody look right up here and go like this, three companies, three. Look at your neighbor say three, three companies. Now what does that mean? It means that there was a three-pronged attack coming against the people of God by the adversary. Now any military general or admiral will tell you that if you're going to fight a war, you want to fight a war on one front and protect your other front so that you're not fighting a war on more than one front. Here, the enemy has determined, I'm not going to attack the people of God on one front. I'm going to attack them now on multiple fronts. Look at your neighbor and tell them, we are on a multiple front attack. Tell them that. It says they came out in three companies. One turned down the road to Oprah, the other to the land of Shul. Another company turned to the road of Beth Horon, and another company turned to the road of the border that looks over the valley of Zeboam toward the wilderness. Look at verse number 19. Now there was no blacksmith to be found throughout all the land of Egypt. For the Philistines said, everybody say, the Philistines said. Say it again. Say it one more time. Now, what does that tell us? That tells us that what's about to be revealed here was not an accident. It was not a coincidence. It was a coordinated, communicated strategy. For the Philistines said, lest the Hebrews make swords or spears. But all the Israelites would go down to the Philistines to sharpen each man's plowshare, his mattocks, his axe and his sickle. Look at verse number 22. So it came about on the day of battle that there was neither sword nor spear to be found in the hand of the people of God. I want you to look right up here at me. The, the scripture tells us that there was a divinely devised satanic strategy to, to subtly remove blacksmiths from the people of God. Who are blacksmiths? They are weapons makers. Blacksmiths are weapons makers. And what the Spirit of the Lord said to me is that every apostle, every prophet, every evangelist, every pastor, every teacher in the body of Christ right now needs to understand you are not just an encourager. You are a weapons maker. You are a blacksmith. Look at your neighbor and tell him the blacksmiths are coming. Back to the house of God. Say it again. The blacksmiths are coming. Back to the house of God. I said, Lord, what do you mean? He said, for a generation, there has been a season of leaders in the church, especially in the West. They're encouragers. They're preaching, preaching nice messages about Jesus and how he loves you, and he does, and about grace and how wonderful it is. But there's an entire generation of people who are dressed for the marriage supper of the Lamb who need to be in military fatigues and understanding we are a part of the church militant. <laughs> Grab your neighbor's hand and tell them we are a part of the church militant. Now the spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, 
He said, tell my people I'm returning the blacksmiths back to the body of Christ. Weapons makers. I need men and women who will not just encourage my people that everything is going to be all right when they are being hit on every side by every demon, devil and demon and spirit and seduction and perversion. I need weapons makers. And I have come to release some of you that have been holding back on things the Spirit of God has been telling you to say in your pulpits and in your ministries. It is time now to lift up your voice and sound the alarm. God is reweaponizing his army. Somebody say, reweaponize. Say it again, re-weaponize. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, Son, I'm sending the blacksmiths back to the body of Christ. And my church needs to understand. Go to Jeremiah 51. I got to hurry. Go to Jeremiah 51. Jeremiah chapter 51. Glory be to God forevermore. Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse number 20. Watch what God says here. Jeremiah 51 and verse number 20. You've heard it. (laughs) But let's go back to it. Are you still in the room with me? Jeremiah chapter 51 and verse number 20, he says, you, you, you are my battle axe. And my weapons of war. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, he's talking to you. He's talking to his church. He's talking to his new covenant believer. He is talking to the new creation. And he says, you are my battle axe. Watch this. With you, I will break nations in pieces. With you, I will destroy kingdoms. With you... I will break in peace the horse and its rider. With you, I will break in pieces the chariot and its rider. With you, I will also break in pieces man and will. Are you listening to this? God just said, I'm going to use my weapons to address political issues, military issues, cultural issues, relational issues. Men who don't know their men and women who don't know their women. I'm going to use you. Boy, it's too quiet in here. Look at verse, tw- look at verse 22. With you, I will break in pieces men and women. In other words, if there are men and women issues, I'm going to use you to deal with it. With you, I will break in pieces old and young. If there's a generational issue, I'm going to use you to deal with it. With you, I will break in pieces the young man and his maid. They don't know who to marry, same-sex marriage, this and that. I'm going to use my church. You don't have to like me. You don't have to like me. I don't go places to be liked. Do you understand? I go to deliver the word of God and I'll go back to the wilderness. Watch it. Watch it. I'm going, man. I'm going. Watch. Watch. With you, I will break in pieces young man and maiden. Verse 23, with you. I will also break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. So wait, look at what God says. He said, I'm also going to use my weapons to deal with the church. The institutional organized church. See, there is the church and then there is the remnant. And God is calling his remnant church to rise up with their weaponry. Lay your hand upon yourself and say there is a download that is happening right now for an upgrade in operation and system functionality. The Lord said to me, he said, son, tell my people, don't be confused. He said, just like when you're downloading a new program into your computer, There's a moment where everything looks crazy. 
The screen goes gray. Am I preaching to anybody? You can't send or receive a message. It seems like you are disconnected. Grab your neighbor's hand. Say, don't dismay. That's just the download that is coming for the upgrade. I know it looks crazy in the church right now, but it's the download coming for the upgrade. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, in a few days, say, say, actually, after today, you're going to be operating on a new system, functioning on another level, seeing things you couldn't see a day ago, hearing things you couldn't hear a couple of days ago. Now, now the Spirit of the Lord said to me, he said, son, he said, it's not only going to be significant now in this moment that my church is re-weaponized and the systems are upgraded. He said, it is also going to be significant. Grab your neighbor's hand and say, don't miss this. He said, it is also going to be significant that they get in and stay in the right fight. Would you, ah, God help me here. Would you look at your neighbor and say, get in and stay in the right fight. The children look at me right here because I'm just going to preach the Bible to you. But I need you to understand that what I'm about to say to you is from the word. See, th- th- there was in the late 80s and in the 90s in the church, there was a wave of, of revelation that came about spiritual warfare. And it was needful and it was necessary. But remember, revelation of the spirit is progressive. (laughs) Revelation of the spirit is progressive. See, Jesus gave the principle of increase and advance in kingdom operations when he talked about John the Baptist. He said, he said, he said, from the time of John the Baptist, the kingdom of God is preached and everyone is pressing into it. This is the principle of kingdom increase. A thing is preached and then the body presses into it. You can only press as far as you've been preached to. I need you to hear me. And so when God is getting ready to advance again, he will download further revelation. So that generation that pressed into the last advance can now hear a word that gives them the ability to press a little more. Oh, God, I wish I had time to preach this. Uh, And then the church, the kingdom would advance. And like every military operation, uh, the adversary builds up fortifications against your last advance. And so what God has to do now is he has to download further revelation to his apostles and prophets so they can proclaim another level of revelation and the body can press. Grab your neighbor's hand, squeeze it real tight, and say, preaching and pressing in. Say it, preaching and pressing in. Look at your neighbor and say, you cannot press in to what has not been proclaimed. God help me. So what I'm about to tell you is God is now sending apostles and prophets to his church that are going to take the foundational revelation of the Elijahs like Dr. Cirillo and uh, and Dr. Roberts and, and Kenneth Hagin and others and they're going to take it another step, not a new truth, not another word, not another scripture, a further revelation on the same truth. Now, the Spirit of God said to me, he said, son, part of the problem, thank you, Master. He said, part of the problem right now is the church has pressed as far in to the previous generation of revelation as they can. And the enemy has built up fortifications. And so the, thank you, Master. So the advance seems to be halted. He said to me, that wave 
of insight and revelation, knowledge that was revealed in the late 80s and the 90s about spiritual warfare was to alert much of the church who didn't even realize there was a warfare to the fact that there was a battle. He said, but most of the revelation and the insight that was given was old covenant revelation. He said a lot of it came from Daniel chapter 10. Go to Daniel chapter 10. Just a minute. I, I, just, I don't know how much time I have, Greg. It, 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 if you need to snatch the mic, snatch it. And I'll just yell on the way out the door. Uh, I, I won't be long. So, so a, a lot of the insight, oh, please hear me. See, a lot of the insight that we got is from old covenant revelation and old covenant insight. And it's good. It's needed. It's necessary. It got us to hear. I'm not cursing it. I'm not saying put it away. I'm not saying don't thank God for where we've been. Thank God for every step we've taken. But in Daniel chapter 10, we have the story of Daniel who seeks to understand some things from the scriptures by the Spirit. And most of us know the story, but I've got to read a few verses just for the sake of understanding. Look at Daniel 10. It says, in the third year, verse 1 of Cyrus, king of Persia, a message was revealed to Daniel, whose name was Belshazzar. It says the, he understood the message and had understanding of the vision. Daniel now begins to speak. In those days, uh, I, I was mourning for three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread. So, so Daniel starts fasting what we have come to know the Daniel fast for 21 days. Are you still here? While Daniel is fasting, an angel comes and appears to him. And in verse 5, he says, I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded. So this was an angel who took on the appearance of a man. Look at verse 7. And I, Daniel, alone saw the vision, for the men who were with me did not see the vision. So now we know that the man that Daniel's seeing is a spiritual being. He is seeing a spiritual vision. Go down. Are you still here? Go down to verse 9. He says, I heard the sound of his words, and while I heard the sound of his words, it was like I was in a deep sleep. So he is, if he is in essence, almost like in a prophetic trance like Peter was in Acts chapter 10, receiving revelation knowledge. Look at verse number 12. Then Daniel said, do not fear Daniel, for from the first day, oh, don't miss this, from the first day, you set your heart to understand and woman yourself before the Lord, before your God, your words were heard. Now, how long does Daniel say he was fasting? 21 days. When the angel comes to him, the angel says, Daniel from the... Okay, so if the angel was sent on the first day, then Daniel's fasting is not what got the angel there. Come, come. See, fasting does not move God. Fasting does not move angels. Fasting quiets your mind, your will, your emotions, your attitude, and your body so your spirit can have the ascendancy over them and be more sensitive to the spiritual realm. The angel says, I came the moment you called. Why is that important? Oh! Oh, it's important. Watch this. He said, and I, oh, God, all of this is so good. He, he, he says, and I have come because of your words. Back it up. If you hadn't said something, if you hadn't said what you said, I would not have come here. Grab your neighbor's head and say, download, upgrade, your words, move angels. Your words. Now, now we know what Daniel, he said he was seeking the scriptures. So Daniel's words were not his words. They were God's words. And the angels hearkened to the voice of the word of the Lord. 
So when Daniel started saying what God had said, angels started moving. Are you still in the room? Watch this. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm almost where I need to be. Are you still here? Watch this. And I've come because of your words. Look at verse 13. But the prince of Persia withstood me 21 days. Now we know what your fasting was about. Your fasting was not to get me there. Your fasting was to make sure that you kept saying what you needed to be saying while this warfare was going on in that realm. It was your words that started me moving. You remember, you remember when, when Jairus came to Jesus and he said, my daughter's about to die. And Jesus says, I'll come and heal her. And they're on the way and they're going. And then someone comes from the house and says to Jairus, don't bother the master anymore. Your, your, your daughter's dead. And Jesus, what he does is he steps in between unbelief and Jairus. And he looks like this. And he says, you be quiet and don't you do anything but believe. In other words, he said, the reason I'm walking with you is because of what you said. Don't change what you say, and I'll keep coming to your house. Are you still in the room? Look at verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. And behold, Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me. For I had been left alone there with the king's... Of Persia. Now, now I have come to make you understand what will happen. Don't get it, get it. So this is a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and understanding. No, 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 no. no. So this is a spirit of wisdom of revelation and of understanding. He says, I came so you could understand. In other words, the holdup in the heavens was to keep revelation knowledge from getting into the earth realm, into the minds and spirits of God's people because the devil knows if you ever get the revelation, he is out of business. Now watch this. He says the warfare up here was to keep you from getting understanding. I feel the Holy Ghost and spiritual revelation. This is why Paul prayed, I pray that you be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. And so watch this now. The angel comes and delivers. And I want you to get this. It's so magnificent, preacher. It's, 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 so, it's so magnificent when you see it. Look at your neighbor and say, he's almost done yelling, I promise. Watch this. Watch this. He says, I've come to make you understand. And then the Bible goes on and talks about how he touched his lips, gave him understanding. Now look at verse Number 20. And then he said, now, do you now, do you, do you know now why I've come to you? I want you to get what this is. This is an angel, a spirit of wisdom, revelation, and understanding, downloading to a prophet things he needs to know to declare to God's people so they can know what time it is and take the word of God and war with it. And the angel says, listen, now I've given you what you need to know. Do you have it? That's what this is. Do you have it? Yes. Are you sure you've got it? Yes. Watch what he says. He says, and now I got to return to fight with the prince of Persia. And when I've gone forth, indeed the prince of Greece will come. In other words, because you now have this revelation, the enemy is sending fortifications. Yeah. 
I was, I was just, I was only fighting with the prince of Greece when I came through. But now that you've got this, the prince of Greece has called reinforcements from the prince of, of Persia. And now I got to go back through that. So I need to know that you have what I came here to give you. Now watch this. Now watch this. That was Daniel's warfare. That was Jeremiah's warfare. That was Ezekiel's warfare. That was David's warfare and Micah's warfare and Jeremiah's warfare. That was Elijah's warfare. That is not your warfare. This is why in sec- ah, thank you, Holy Ghost. This is why in Second Corinthians 10, 3 and 4. Are y'all here? This is why I'm saying you, you and I are told that the weapons of your warfare. I need a minute. I just need a minute. That's, 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 why, that's why he says, now the weapons of your warfare. Why is he saying yours? Because you are not in the same one Daniel was in. You are not in the same one Ezekiel was in. You are not in the same one that, 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 that Jeremiah was in. I got news for you. You are not even in the same one that Jesus was in. Why? How can you say that? Because I can read. Daniel, Ezekiel, Jeremiah, they were fighting in a covenant that was not finished. Jesus came to finish the covenant that they were fighting in. I feel the power of God. And when he finished that covenant through his death, burial, resurrection, ascension, and seating. The Bible says that we were raised up. How can you just sit there and look at me? We we were raised up together and seated together with him in the heavenly places. Far about. Far about. Far above every principality, power, throne, and dominion, and every name that is named. That includes the prince of Greece. That includes the prince of Persia. That includes the prince of San Diego. That includes the prince of Los Angeles. I always, I I always wondered, Greg, I always wondered why, why after Jesus' death, burial, resurrection, ascension and seating, when he comes back and appears to his disciples and he blesses them, that while he's blessing them, he goes up. On a cloud. God makes no superfluous displays of power. He doesn't do things just to show off. He doesn't do things just to exemplify his greatness. No, 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 no. Why does Jesus ascend? Because he has to go up through that region where principalities and powers where the princes of Greece and Persia have. And he has to go up through there and say, all of this is mine now. All of this is mine. And you cannot touch the new creation. He goes up there. And he announces to every throne 
every dominion, every principality, every power, every ruler of the darkness of this world, you have been unseated. These thrones no longer belong to you. They now belong to the church. I can see you looking at me, wanting to say amen. But your, your last monument of revelation that you camped out around won't let you move on. But I have come to kick over that sacred cow, listen to him move, and take you by the hand and take you in to another dimension of revelation. We have been sp we have been speaking to Satan in the wrong direction. We have been speaking up to him when we need to be speaking down to him because we are above him in Christ Jesus. Look at your neighbor and tell him, I am certain he is out of time. I want you to see something. I want you to see something and I won't be long with this. Oh. <laughs> well, if you're going to give it to him, give it to him. He did it. He's the one who did it. Watch this, children of God. Watch it. When the spirit of grace, Greg, began to share this with me, I said, God, how can I preach this? <laughs> They're going to think I'm an alien. <laughs> he said, just tell them you've come from their future. <laughs> Listen, they had an increase. See, this is an increase. It's an increase in revelation that is going to empower you to stop wrestling. You see, if you read Ephesians 6 properly, you are not told there to wrestle. You are told there to stand. You, you are told, finally, brother, be strong in the Lord and in the power of, meaning in the power of what he finished for you. Iskus, in the power of his ability. Then you are told to put on the whole armor of God. Watch this, that you may be able to withstand. Not that you may be able to wrestle. That you may be able to withstand. Withstand what? Withstand the temptation to wrestle. Now watch it. Then he says, now if you are wrestling, which you shouldn't be doing, but if you are wrestling, let me tell you what you're wrestling with. You are not wrestling with flesh and blood. That's why I'm telling you not to wrestle. You are not equipped to wrestle. You are equipped to stand. But if you are wrestling, let me tell you, you're not wrestling with flesh and blood. You're wrestling with powers, with principalities, with spiritual forms of wickedness in heavenly places, and with rulers of the darkness of this world. That's why I'm telling you, put on the whole armor of God. 
And every piece of that armor is the word of God. Every piece of that armor is the ability for you to continue speaking what Jesus Christ has finished for you. And then he says that once you do that, then keep praying the word of God with every manner of prayer you can. And having done all to wrestle, no, having done all to, then then don't get back in the wrestle. That's what he says. So if you're wrestling, you're already losing. Now watch it. Watch it. Watch it. And I said, God, I I got it. But can you just give me a few sure words for the people so they can know that I'm not preaching crazy? He said, yeah, I'll give you exactly what I gave David. I'll give you five smooth stones. Watch this. Ephesians chapter 1. I'm I'm done. Uh, Start playing something so they know I'm I'm done. (laughs) You know, music says the preacher is done. Look at Ephesians 1, 3. 1, 2, 3. I'm going to give you five blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in heavenly what's it say say it out loud places oh okay okay Ephesians 1 20 watch this which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead And seated him at his right hand in the heavenly. Say it out loud. Places. Places. Okay, it says places again. Okay. Ephesians 2, 6, third stone. Let let me me start at verse 4. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you, you have been saved. And raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly. What's it say? Okay, watch it, watch it, watch it. Ephesians 3. Oh God. Uh, let me read, let me start at verse 8. To, to me who am least in all the saints, this grace was given that I should make known among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ and to make everybody see what their part in this mystery is which from the beginning of the ages has been hidden in God to the intent uh, who created all things through Jesus Christ to the intent that now the manifold wisdom of God might be made known by the church to the principalities in the heavenly places huh Ephesians six twelve. For we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against rulers of the darks of this age, against spiritual hosts of wickedness in the heavenly. Look right up here at me. Every one of those passages says heavenly place says, not heavenly place. Let me come down here. It doesn't say we were seated together in the heavenly place. It doesn't say he raised us up to sit in the heavenly place. It doesn't say to the intent that now the man of wisdom of God might make him known by the church to the prince of and powers in the heavenly place. No, it says place says. See, our revelation of what happened is that Jesus is up there on the throne and there's one throne and we're all scooched in there together with him all occupied scoot over let me get some throne room look at your neighbor and say no 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 he said heavenly play says 
No, no, no. You don't get his throne. You get the prince of Persia's throne. You get the prince of Greece's throne. You get the prince of Asia's throne. You get the prince of LA's throne. You get the prince of San Diego's throne. That prince has been dethroned. He has been unseated. And God is about to raise up a church who knows who is actually in the seat of authority in cities. When the church gets the revelation that the principalities you are fighting are sitting in your seat, the one that you're supposed to be occupying, then the church will say in cities, we come against the spirit of perversion and there won't be a long fight because one will be able to chase a thousand and two, 10,000. Lay your hands upon yourself. Say download, upgrade. Look at your neighbor and say, you are not to be fighting devils, demons, yokes, bondages. They are defeated. Jesus defeated them. You and I are not fighting for victories. We are fighting from victory. We are not trying to win over devils. We are enforcing Jesus' defeat over them. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. He that has ears to hear, let him hear. I am telling you that what is about to happen in your house, mama, what is about to happen in your house, dad, is you are now going to get a word from God and speak it in the bedroom. And by sundown, a change will have happened in some circumstance or situation because now you know where you're speaking from. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. I am telling you in the name of Jesus that the battle's not going to be long now for your son or daughter strung out on drugs or strung out on cocaine. You're going to get a word from God and speak it in the kitchen. And in 24 hours, you're going to get a word that your daughter is delivered and your son has been set free. Lay your hand on your brother. Lay your hand on your sister. Tell them this is flowing into you now. If you pray in the Spirit, give me 60 more seconds in the Holy Ghost. I'm done. Give me 60 seconds in the Spirit. You are being re-weaponized. You are being upgraded right now. When you say the name of Jesus, Something else is about to happen now. When you bind the devil, something else is about to happen now. When you speak a word, something supernatural is going to happen in your atmosphere. I feel the power of God praying the Holy Ghost. When you say in the name of Jesus, the atmosphere in a room is going to shift. Hey! Yes, pray in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit. I'm done praying the Holy Ghost. Yes, <laughs> God. There it is. Yes, Shanda. Spirit of the living God. Yirebo Kasa. Rekashandereba. Some of you, this is a confirmation. Eba Rekashota. Elabora Keshanda. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Shoto. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. 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 Whoa. Princes of nations are about to be dethroned. I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey! Lift your hands up, lift your hands up, lift your hands up. I saw in the spirit. I saw. Spirits that have been undisturbed in regions for years. I saw them beginning to move in unrest. I tell you by the Spirit, I speak the truth. I saw them beginning to hear the sound coming from the mouth of the ecclesia, coming from the mouth of the church. A church that is awakening to the authority that it has been given by its king. Did he not say he was the king of kings? And the Lord of... Yeah. Father, in the name of Jesus. Before there was ever a Clarence McClendon. You sent Amora Sorello to build you an army. Your servant did that. And now you have given me just a small part of helping to re-weaponize that army. And Lord, I know by the Spirit that you are doing something in the supernatural realm that is being downloaded into the hearts and minds now of your remnant church. For some of you, the words that I preached, they were confirmation, they weren't information. For some of you, you were saying, oh, I'm glad somebody said this so I didn't have to be the first one. I'm just crazy enough to say it. See, what people don't understand about me is I'm not smart enough to preach anything except for what I hear. I don't have the gifts a lot of preachers have. I got to hear from God to say anything. But I'm telling you as surely as I'm standing here, you are being re-weaponized. And your weapons are being upgraded. Lift your hands. For some of you, as I was speaking, it was like something in you was being released. There are pastors and preachers listening to me in this room ministers of the gospel some of you listening to me there and now just like I was talking about when brother Sorello came and reached out to me I was released to begin to declare some things you are now being released to begin to say some things that the Spirit of God has been speaking to you in the spirit about for months even year or two he's been saying things and you've been waiting for the release on the word I feel the power of God you are now getting your release. It's time for you to say what the Spirit of God is telling you to say. And say it boldly. Lift your hands one more time. Father, say it in the name of Jesus. I receive this grace, this anointing to re-weaponize. Re-weaponize me, God. And take my weapons to the next level I receive the download and I accept the upgrade in the name of Jesus increase 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 now somebody 
somebody shout about that. Come on, shout about it. Pull it down. Pull it down. I receive it. Yes. those of you in this room I need to do two, two things real quickly I'm going to give it to Greg there are those of you in this room who would say you know what Bishop McClendon really th these things that you said were a confirmation to my spirit I, I didn't have it all like you had it I may not have been able to say it the way you said it but God has been dealing with me uh, I feel the Holy Ghost right here God's been dealing with me that, that there's another level and another dimension he's been sending me into. I am telling you in the name of Jesus, by the grace of Almighty God, not because I'm saying so, because what I'm because I'm saying what I hear him saying. You are being released into that thing today. And that witness is being released. If that is you, we're going to sing this a couple more times. I want you to come to this altar. If it's you, if it's not, stay where you are. If it's not you, stay where you are. You don't have to be here to get what I'm talking about. But if you are one of those and you say, you know what, prophet of God, this thing was such a confirmation in my spirit. God's been dealing with me. Some of you are consecrating right now. You're fasting right now because you know that other level, that other dimension is coming. And I'm going to pray for you in just a moment. I'm just going to pray the prayer of agreement that exactly what God has been saying in your spirit would be confirmed in such a way that it is undeniable today and it'll be undeniable when you go back home now I need you to hear me I need you to hear me this word is going to go out from this place with you into cities and communities and regions and nations but it's also going to go out in waves and the Spirit of the Lord said to me he said son I want you once you have done this I want you to have a foundation laid right here in Legacy Center on this matter and this word because something's about to emanate from here because God delivered the word here and because you and I are here in this great conference and he said to me I want you to have 12 people 11 other than yourself I'm number one and and some of you you'll immediately bear witness it's not everybody there's more than 12 people here more than 12 people watching me I want you to have 12 people who know this is a word from God for them for their church for their ministry for their region maybe for their house or for their nation to sow a seed of twelve hundred a hundred dollars for every month in to Morris Sorello World Evangelism in this legacy said it's not for me it's not for my ministry this is for this work that's happening right here that all of us are partakers of the grace of God now there are at least 11 of you other than me that are going to do that and I'm gonna trust you to do it I'll do it as Greg comes in just a moment there are others of you you say prophet of God that's not me 
and I'll deal with you in just a moment. But if you are one of the 11 along with me that say, prophet of God, I know that's God speaking to me. Raise your hand. Raise it up. Raise it up. Raise it up. Yeah, yeah. Get them an envelope real quick. I'm about to pray for you. But I need to do this orderly because I'm under divine instruction. And when I leave here, thank you, Lord. What I've deposited here is not going to leave you. Thank you. Thank you, my dear. Thank you. Thank you. I, if you're one of those 12 along with me, just raise your hands. I want to give you an envelope. And I want you to sow. Hold that. Hold that. I want you to sow with me in just a moment. I'm about to pray. You know that this word was a confirmation to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If that's you, raise your hand. Raise it up. Raise it up. Thank you, man of God. Sir, sir, come here. There's a, there's, a, there's a fresh, there's an anointing of fresh oil coming on you. And this battle you've been in for the last several months, God said, is over. You were literally, it was almost like you were on your last. And the Spirit of God is breathing life into you and your ministry, not only to Christians, but to Jewish people is being increased somebody say receive receive re receive 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 anybody else anybody else anybody else anybody else william get him an envelope if that's you if that's you if that's you all right now the rest of you if, if you're one of those that have received that seed and you're sowing the $1,200 seed. It's a foundational seed. 12 is the number of foundations. There's a foundation being laid here. There's a foundation being laid in you. There's a foundation being laid for this word to begin to sweep through the body of Christ. Even where I don't preach, even where you and I don't declare it, it's going to flow because now it's been released in the earth. Are you there? So. If, if you're not one of those, I want as many of you as can to get a seed of at least, at least $100. If you can get that seed and sow it, and you say, prophet of God, I'm going to sow that seed. Raise your hand right now. If that's you, if that's you, if that's you, this is not a game, this is not a gimmick. The same anointing that was on me when I was preaching is on me right now. I am under divine direction I'm gonna pray hallelujah those of you that are watching us live streaming if you're one of those 1200 let us know it if you're one of those 70 and I know there are some of you out there the Spirit of God is bearing witness with your spirit I want you to get ready if you're at your seat you say prophet I'm not a $1,200 sower today I'm not a $70 sower, a $100 sower but I'm gonna sow something I want you to get a seed and sow it because I am getting ready to pray and I am telling you in the name of Jesus something supernatural is not only being imparted it's going home with you hallelujah hallelujah would you look would you look at a neighbor close to you and say this anointing say this anointing this grace this upgrade is going home with you. It's going to bed with you tonight. It's going to wake up with you tomorrow. And you're going to walk in it from this day forward. Now I want you to get your seed ready. I'm about to pray. If you're a $1,200 sower, if you're a $70 sower, a $100 sower, whatever you're sowing, no game, no gimmick, no compulsion. This is a seed sown into a word from God so that the life of that word will continue to increase. Jesus told us that when the word is sown, Satan comes immediately to steal it. This word will not be stolen from the sower. This word will not be stolen from the man or woman who sows into it. That is a biblical principle, a secret that the church needs to know. When you sow into a word, the enemy cannot take it from you. Somebody say amen to that. Lift your hands, lift that seed. I want you to say this out loud. Father, 
in the name of Jesus, I receive the download, I accept the upgrade, and I thank you for the confirmation of your word. I boldly confess, I am increasing on every side, in every way, and I boldly declare in favor, in finance, in things being added to me, in grace, I am increased more and more in the name of Jesus. It is so. Amen. Now somebody shout about that. Come on. Come on. This Come on. Nation. The Listen, if your offering is ready, you, you, you can put it on the platform. You can stay here with Bishop. If you need to prepare it, just go to your seat. We're going to receive everyone's together in just a moment. And you can use the QR code. You know all the ways that you can give. But go ahead now. This is the time to go and continue to obey what you have promised the Lord in this incredible anointing. Prepare your offering. You may even raise the level of your faith. The Lord spoke to me. I was about to sow particular amount I'm not going to say the amount and then the Lord said no you need to do this and so if you hear that you need to do this I just said Lord are you kidding of course I'll do it I'd love to do it God's a rewarder so prepare your giving no we're ready Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit yeah, if, it's, if it's ready you can just put it right on the platform yeah we'll grab thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. 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 In the name. You heard a word from the Lord today. I want you to give the Lord a good hand clap of praise. Somebody shout increase. Amen and amen. Listen, continue to prepare your giving. We have a few things before we dismiss in just a minute you do not want to miss. And so I'm going to just share a few things with you. If you want to bring your offering and bring it to the platform, you can. We'll serve you where you are, just however you want to do that. So yesterday we announced the registration desk is open if you would like to make a hotel reservation at Legacy for the Feast of Passover in April. I think there are still some rooms available because I have not heard from anybody that we sold out. So they're also offering rooms Pentecost weekend at the Legacy Hotel at a very special conference rate. That's the weekend. What are you telling me, honey? No, you. what are you telling me? Talk lower? Okay. What are you saying? Nothing. <laughs> I know. I love you. you can't hear. 
because of the music. All right, guys, lower the music a little bit. Okay, see, she's too nice. But they're just doing their, they're just doing their ministry. Amen. Give the musicians a good God bless you. So Jerry just had, you know, she just adopted the spirit of Morris Earl. She said, I have to take authority. They can't hear you. Amen. So amen. So uh, not only can you, but you can play a little bit. I love it, especially uh, Kevin uh, and everybody, of course, but uh, especially Kevin. Amen. How many of you love Kevin Wade? Come on, give Kevin a good God bless you. Amen. So I want to encourage you during the break time this afternoon, if you didn't get your hotel reservation in for Passover, do that. If you did and you want to come, Pentecost weekend is going to be incredible. Mario Morello is coming for a miracle service. Perry Stone will be with us. And uh, we have so many uh, others that are coming. It's just going to be a, an incredible weekend. Uh, oh, Bishop, how many, of you want, how many of you thank God for Bishop Clarence McClendon? Bishop McClendon will be here for Pentecost weekend. And you know, uh, David really wanted to institute, and I love this, honoring the feasts of God, because there is a calendar in heaven. We understand that in this ministry. And these are special appointed times that the word of God commands us to come before him and worship. And you say, oh, well, that was the Old Testament. Well, I want you to know something, that I don't believe that the feast changed one bit because Jesus, if the Old Testament was the end of the feast, then why was it that Jesus literally gave his life on the day of Passover? Why is it that the Holy Spirit was poured out? This is after the resurrection, 50 days after the Holy Spirit was poured out on the literal day of Pentecost. And many people believe, and I'm not saying this is gospel, but that Jesus Christ will literally return during the Feast of Tabernacles. Wouldn't it be cool to be here at Legacy and Jesus just, we got, know, we got, we got an extra guest speaker on the list. It's Jesus. He says, look, I'm ready to take you home. But who knows? I don't know. But I know that they're very special times. And uh, so we want you to make your plans to be here. So just letting you know that you can get your reservations in. And like I said yesterday, uh, you know, you can make a reservation like you can any hotel. Uh, and then if something changes, uh, you know, within a few days or a week or two weeks before, and you just realize that you are not able to make it, you're able to cancel, there's no penalty. But it's better to have your reservation in and come than to not have it in and then find out later that you could make it and then you're going to be in a different hotel. So we want you, as many as can, to be in the Legacy Hotel. So you can do that this afternoon. You can also get tickets if you didn't go on the Soaring Over Israel. Uh, you can do that this afternoon and there's tickets available at the registration table. Also, School of Ministry scholarship enrollment cards. They have a little QR code takes you about 30 seconds and you'll be in the school of ministry so make sure that you uh do that and then finally before i have a special surprise for us uh we want to ask those of you like our brother chinda and others that god has blessed through the school of ministry through the mar through the ministry of dr morris Trillo. i want to ask you to take some time after the service and if you'll go to the library the library is just right above us and uh, we have a, a TV crew in the library, and they just have five questions they're gonna ask you. I mean, and the first question is, uh, what is your name? How many of you know your name, okay? So you've already, you've already you're, doing, you're doing great. The other question is, uh, how did you get connected with the ministry of Morris Cirillo? Or how did you get connected with the GVA School of Ministry? What a great thing to hear that during the pandemic, when the world was in lockdown, I want you to know something, there was no lockdown in heaven. There was no lockdown over legacy and students like Chinda and tens and tens of thousands of others were taking advantage of the opportunity to be connected online. And so we wanna know how you got connected with the ministry, what the impact of the ministry was, uh, and then what you would say to somebody else that's thinking about uh, coming to Legacy, thinking about being a part of the School of Ministry, and uh, then anything else that you'd like to share, words of thanks to the uh, partners, to David, to Susan, to the ministry. Anyway, uh, that's available. We want to uh, really hear, we love to hear what the Lord is doing in your life through the ministry. And so please, please, please don't be like the nine lepers who didn't come back, but be like that one 
the Bible says they came back to give God thanks. And so you can do that in the library uh, right after uh, the service uh, this morning. And uh, before we are dismissed, how many of you saw our amazing dancers, the Hawaiian dancers from Colorado? How many of you saw them out on the plaza yesterday? Come on, if you did give them a good God bless you. They came all the way here. They're partners, of course. They're amazing partners. But they said, we would love to give this gift of dance. And so they're going to do it again this afternoon from 2 uh, to 4 o'clock. But uh, they're in the house. And uh, I want you to go. Come on, you guys. Don't be shy. Don't be, don't be slow. Be quick. And uh, give them a good hand clap. And uh, cap and gown meeting, uh, 1.30. How many of you are being celebrated in the cap and gown service? Let me see your hands. So you want to be here in the auditorium at 1.30 to meet with Spring, and she's getting everything set up. All right, I tell you what, we're going to continue to praise the Lord. You want? I want to ask you just to hang with us for about five uh, minutes. We're going to move this pulpit, and uh, come on, let's give the dancers, come on, give them a good God bless you as they come in Jesus' mighty name. Oh, come on, let's give them a good hand clap. The Bible says, praise him in the dance. You guys could take it. All right, yeah, you see, I have to to do this with our own musicians. But no, you guys can come right here. Everybody, oh, you're going to walk there. All right, you see, I'm going to, let's just get out of the way. All right. Uh, this is a Judy Jacobs song, and I'm not David, but I am Greg, but that's okay. Yeah, thank you, but it's a Judy Jacobs song. Come on, give them another good hand clap.
to the four corners of the earth. Speak to every nation. Yes, we do hear the voice of the Lord. you love to hear that sound. Hear the sound. No longer fatherless but sons. Sons and daughters sing and sing and sing and sing. We will go for you. was an anointing that was a message from the Lord Jack I was thinking about how in just the next few days our partners are going to be getting an invitation to become one of our club members and our theme this year is speak light to the nations how many of you know this gospel shall be preached in every nation we're a part of God's end time plan and God hasn't planned any defeats for us 
How many of you believe we're going to speak to the nations in 2024 like never before? Come on, if you believe that, give the Lord a mighty shout of praise. Turn to two or three people. Tell them this is your year to speak to the nations. Have a great afternoon. Please, if you have a testimony, God's done something in your life. I just talked to our TV people. They're waiting for you in the library. It'll take about two minutes of your time. Get your reservation in at the Legacy Hotel for Passover, April, uh, Pentecost in May. Uh, the Legacy Center is open. Teresa's is open for lunch. They have a great uh, buffet uh, menu. We'll see you back here tonight. Phil Driscoll, Iowa, Ritsa Jafar. Get here early, uh, 6.30, the doors will open. Have a blessed afternoon. Enjoy the presence of God. Get to the Wailing Wall. Get to the Prayer Garden. Uh, get to uh, Teresa's. Get to the library. And uh, in the library is Dr. Cirillo's Bible, and uh, you have to see it. You can look at the Bible digitally. Uh, you'll have to just go up there and see what I'm talking about. There's prayer rooms. There are six private prayer rooms in the library. They're beautiful. They have a beautiful uh, seat in them. You can lock yourself in and pray. You can sit down, and if you just want to study, there's tables, there's chairs, there's all of Dr. Cirillo's uh, books and other of our incredible friends uh, and ministry books that you can uh, use while you're in the library. And uh, just uh, enjoy the campus. We love you so much. God bless you.